Hi guys, uh, in this video I'll be running through um, how you can use sounds in your application uh, using the sound pool class and I've already discussed the different ways in which you can uh, play sounds or music in your application and whether media player or sound pool is, is the best way uh, to go about doing this. If you've missed uh, <clears throat> this video you can you can check it out if you like in the uh, in the link in the description below. So uh, we'll get right to it. So let's uh, create a new application and call it what you like. So we're just going to call it Sound Pool Demonstration. Demonstration. And go with API 17. Just going to stick with that. Blank activity and keep them defaults. I'm just gonna just select my emulator for the display. Okay, and I'll come back to this because I want to want to set a button up just to demonstrate the activity. So we'll go to our main activity Java. Now the first thing, <coughs> first thing I, I want to do is I want to create a, a a raw folder inside our resources directory, and that's where we're going to be storing our our, fo our sound files or music files or what what we want to use. So best way to do this is right click on resources and new we are create an Android resource directory now under resource type we want to select raw and it will rename your directory raw and you just ok that so it creates a new raw directory for us for, for us to put our sound files in so I'm just going to pick a sound file and I'm going to use something small um, I'll use a ray gun. So I'll just right click on the sound I want, copy, oh, copy, and just paste. And it gives us a chance to rename the, 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 the file because you don't want anything with, with capitals in or funny characters. So you keep it all lowercase if, if you can. And ideally, you want to, and you want to remove any spaces, you can replace the space with underscores. So we'll just uh, we'll keep that. And there's our our sound file so that's ready to be used so we go straight into here so under our main activity we're going to create a sound pool object and I'm going to call it my sound so there's our sound pool object ready to be used now we're not on create under our on create method after our set content view I'm going to reference my sound object and it's going to be equal to a new sound pool and what it's what it's done here is put a, you can see it's put a line through because as of API 21 sound pool's been deprecated. This just means it's no longer supported. It still it will still work. What it wants you to do is it, it wants you to use a sound pool builder, but we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be uh, sticking with uh, the old. This is kind of like the old way. There is a newer way of doing it using sound pool builder, but I'm just going to stick with the old way. This still work and it still works. For, it still work for years to come. So. I'm just going to stick with this. So it's asking for three parameters: the maximum streams, the stream type, and this quality, which doesn't actually get used. So we're going to um, we're going to go with max streams. So I'm going to define this. What this what this defines is the maximum amount of sounds that can be played at once that your object your your sample object will play at once at any one time. So just for now, I'm just going to put one, and then we can look at the differences. In a, in a moment. So I'm going to sit with one, so I'll only play one sound at a time. And then comma, and the stream type, we want to type audio manager dot, and these are the different types. Um, but we're just going to sit with stream music. It's just for information purposes, really. Um, and then comma zero. And then we can finish that off. So that's how we define a constructor. <clears throat> now I'm going to load a sound into a, a, my object, so it's just my sound dot load, and it's going to ask for a context, which is this context, um, resource ID, and um, a priority. First context you want is this con is this, and the resource ID will be r dot raw because it's inside our raw resources and inside our raw folder dot and just the name of our file, we don't want to put a, an extension 
it's sort of more automatically seen that our, our ray gun file is there so we just we just select that and we don't want to, we don't want to put dot wave or dot mp3 or whatever format you're going to be using so just leave it as that and then the priority but we just leave it as one and then we just close it off but what what happens is this this load this load method actually returns an integer so you want to collect that integer because you need to reference it later to be able to play it so we're going to up here we're going to create an integer so int and we're going to call it um, I'd personally call it the name of the, of the of the sound to be played but you can call it whatever you want um, so I'm going to call it raygun id and then finish that off so this, this value like I say returns an integer so we want to collect that integer and so we call it so we go call right I'll call a raygun ID variable equal to it's now equal to this this value that's collected that's returned so that so when you we create our application when the applications opened it will reference this sample of this sound a uh, sample object my sound it will load up this sound into it this sound here and it will give it an ID so what we need to do now is we need to go to our XML and we want to create just create a button. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this hello world. I'm just going to tidy this up. Okay, so I'm just going to use oh, I'm just going to use the design wizard. I'm just going to pop a button just there, and I'm going to call this button fire. And I'm just going to create an on click an on click method called play gun, and we're going to create a play gun method in our main activity. So when we click the button, it, pl it executes this method. So now I want to I want to, want this I want this method to play play the sound that's loaded that's loaded up here. So all I do is I reference my sound object dot and play and it's asking for all these values to be passed in so we've got a sound ID which is our integer we created which are called raygun ID and it's asking for a float volume left float volume right so that's the volumes for our left and right channels it's priority um, it's the loop is how many times you want the, the, the sound to loop so zero will be just play once and you can get that to loop as many times as you want up and if, if you want it to loop in indefinitely you just put minus one and then we've got a float rate at the at the end the last value which is um our pitch adjustment which ranges from 0.5 to 2 i think you can you, you can put in whatever figure you want our first parameter it's looking for is the sound, is the sound id which is what we called raygun id Second, second value is the float left volume, which we're going to define as one. Then the right float volume, which is one. Then our priority, which we'll just say one. Oh, comma one. And our loop, how many times you want the, the sound to loop? We just we just want it to play once, so we're going to say zero. And our float rate. So if you want it to play at normal speed, we put one. If we want to play at half speed, we put a 0.5, and obviously twice the speed, we put two. So we'll just leave it as is. Finish off with a semicolon, and we'll check that out. See if it works. Okay, so as we press this button, so there we go. So there it works. Now, if we press it twice, we keep pressing it. 
it literally as soon as we press it again it stops the old sound and, and, and replays the, starts the sound again so it's only actually playing one instance of the, of the sound now if we want to, to for it to play more than one instances of the sound then we need to adjust this value here which is a maximum streams so if we say 10 it will play the sound 10 times it can it can play the sound up to 10 times um, simultaneously so if we reload that And we click on the button uh, lots of times. Let's try it again. So you can hear, you can just subtly hear the difference. So it doesn't just stop and restart the sound, it plays, it's actually playing multiple instances of it in the background. So if you had, say, multiple sounds, so you had a ray gun sound, you had an explosion, and let's say you had some. Uh, uh, some ambience in the background or something, some short ambience in the background. You can have you could have all three of them playing at once. And once it exceeds this value, like I say, it will look for the priority and uh counsel the sound accordingly based on the priority. If the if the priorities are all the same then it will just base it on the age. So we can we can just have a look at these these settings here that we've that we've made. So we look again for this uh this loop. So if we put this loop to three and replay. I've pressed the button again. So as soon as it finishes the sound, it will automatically start it again three times. And if we wanted that to play indefinitely, we just set this figure to minus one. And again, like I said, this sound adjusts the pitch. So if we put 0.5, don't forget it's a, flo it's a floating point value. So we need to put F at the end. And play that again. It should play at half speed. Okay, so you can see that you've got some element of versatility with with uh, these these settings. So I've just changed it back to once, and if I change that to five, Obviously it's playing it five times five times as fast so it's it's uh hardly anything now is it so so yeah you see so you can change these change these values you have some element of control over the sound um like I say just be careful when you do select your sounds um you you don't want to go over the file limitation which is um, one megabyte so if you say this this file here which is six megabytes if I copy this pop it in our folder. And let's let's just reference this uh, this file instead. And we'll load that file. So if we play that, let's play at the proper proper speed. Plug your shot again. And it only actually played what six, seven seconds of the file, as opposed, I think it's about 30, 30 seconds worth of file there. So it hasn't played the entirety of the file, and you, there's been no error. Um, so you need to be careful when you're using large files. So just be wary of that. Look, see, it's not really ideal. Ideally suited for playing music. That's where you want to use a media player, and again, also you need to be careful that when you load, when you load the uh, load the load the file, you can load multiple files. You, you you'll just need to uh, create some more um, integer variables, like say airport ID. Um, Let's change that back to ray gun, and then you could create an airport ID equals my sound dot load this 
dot.r.raw.airport comma one So you can just like say you can load up multiple sounds and then you can call these sounds in different different methods or however you want to play you can use switch statements you can use um, all, all sorts of ways of playing your sound this is just a simple crude way of, of, of getting it to play the sound uh, you could also use uh, hash maps a hash map to reference um, the, 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 the ID that's returned so instead of using integer IDs you could use um, the index so there's different ways that you can you can play the sound. Just say have an experiment, have a play around, create more buttons, create multiple buttons, see what happens, change the stream values, um, how many streams you can play, and to just see what you can get away with. But like I said, you be careful when, when you load up sounds and you find that when you play them and you don't hear anything, you may find that depending on how you've how you've uh, laid laid out your coding, you might have found that this that you've try to play the, the the sound before it's actually loaded because if it doesn't load the sound before it's played you won't hear anything and you won't get an error or you may not get an error you may get an error it all depends it's what you can do is you can initiate what's called on load complete listeners and they they tell you when when the sound's been loaded and ready for use so you can do some 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 um some boolean checks to see that if it's loaded or not so it's quite it's quite versatile. It's a it's a nice it's a nice um, class to use, and like I said, you, it's it's relatively quick. Uh, it's relatively responsive as well. So. So we've got all these instances playing in the background. <laughs> so that's how it's worth put the ten. So yeah, have fun. Have have a little play. Have fun. See what you can do, and. Um, I hope I hope you uh hope you found this video easy to follow um and thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing